just good old boys. Threw my boss out the window and got fired for my last job. Hot wired a city truck and turned it over. Hey, good morning. Good morning to you, sir. Oh, I'm glad to be back. I, I hadn't really asked. Had, <laughs> I'm, I'm, but I'm glad. I thanks, was jumping that. Thanks for jumping. Yeah. The timing is gone, folks. We're like, we're like Martin and Lewis after the first big movie. Yeah. It's like all of a sudden, now, all it's of just, a sudden, it's yeah, over. I want to He does a show for, you know, three days while I'm gone. I by wanted to be and- Carter and Way Hey, <laughs> Carter and guest host. Special thanks to Junior Samples for filling in. So, average. Well, <laughs> average was gone, yeah. And then also, of course, the great Caleb yeah, Shaw. What did a great, great job. He did a great job, and uh, we had a wonderful time with Caleb. Uh, welcome to South Texas TV Studios, along with this guy, Ash Wade, our stranger, uh, our, our commander in abstentia, is back. I am back, and I'm so, glad to be back. Thrilled to have you back, sir. Didn't think I'd be walking into a sauna yet again. I forgot what this studio feels like. We don't talk about that. It's just the thing of which we do not speak. It's going to get better. It's just, we've now got the VEDC in charge of AC here. (laughs) It's closer than it's ever been. 79 degrees in Victoria, heading to a high today of 94 under mostly cloudy skies. No, partly cloudy skies. Little chance of showers. It's that sun shower. What a 50-50 shot, and yeah. uh, you're going to see less than one one-hundredth of an inch of rain, if it, you get any. It's the rain that doesn't actually hit the ground. No. It looks cloudy, maybe a little you know, daylightning, yep. but then that's it. The weather but, brought uh, to you by the great folks at AT Dillon Feed. For everything you need, there's Dillon Feed. It's time. I owe my yard another dousing of 21-7-14 fertilizer. You were supposed to do that yesterday. Well, I didn't. Well, you got today would have been yesterday would have been great. I have to get back to work to get some rest. Hello, Bill Posey. I saw the great Bill Posey. At the, what did you think about, I mean, scale of 1 to 10. I mean, you've seen all the Indiana Jones movies. 7 or 8. 7 or 8. I liked it. I thought it was well done. Yeah. He looks good for 80, don't you think? Yeah, he does look good for 80. He gives you hope. You could do a yeah, new, you could do some type of Rambo-esque Navy SEAL movie. <laughs> One more war left in you. Disney did not get the opening for that movie that they were hoping no, but I think a lot of people, that when we went to the theater, there were eight, eight people there. There's meat. Meat. Is that what that is? Sound of Freedom is a fantastic. Sound of Freedom. Dawn said something about that, too, said it was wonderful. I'm going to tell you right now, it'll open you up and piss you off. There you go. So, Dawn and I. 82 million for the five-day total. No, that's not many. That's a good opening day. And the weekend was sixty million, not what they were expecting, I'm sure. No, you wonder how much of that is that folks have gotten used to not going to the theater. I watched uh, Extraction. Sheriff Louderback had turned me on to that guy Chris Hemsley that used to play Thor, and uh, he's in a movie that's a th- uh, action deal, and Hemsley's in it, and so is. Uh, well, you said it was good. Yeah, I, I enjoy the Indiana Jones the Dial of Destiny. It is what it is, right? It's Indiana Jones. You're relaxing your brain. It's uh, Critics didn't like it. I, I mean, everybody's a critic, right? I'll tell you this. If I got Steven Spielberg and, and George Lucas in one trailer and all the critics on the planet in another, I'll just push that other trailer off the cliff. Give me Spielberg and Lucas. The graphics were great. I leaned over to Dawn at one point during the movie and said it must have cost a gazillion dollars. Almost $300 million. to To make this movie. Yeah, that's Just what they're saying. The sets, the The, the, the highest production scale. budget of any previous Indiana Jones yeah. movie. The sheer scale of, remember Indy and the roller coasters and the ball rolling over? Well, there's a lot of computer-generated stuff because he doesn't look like that. Yeah. He looks much older, and yet they did a good job... Um, they did a good job with the with, uh, – he was believable. It wasn't like a decrepit old guy from Yellowstone running around. Yeah, I'm at ScreenRant.com, and they're kind of going over why this movie didn't do so well. They're saying that many dedicated fans didn't feel that this, as a sequel to The Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, right. was that good. So does that mean that they didn't go back and watch it a second, third, fourth time, right. and that usually leads to bigger box office? Maybe that's part of it. First movie without Spielberg directing it, did that make a difference? I don't know. I don't know. But see, that you know, 
Harrison Ford was kind of the everyman, wasn't he? Wasn't he so good as Jack Ryan yeah. when he in the uh, Tom Clancy novels where he's just believable as an everyman? I like Harrison Ford, and yet at the same time he can play the hero. I don't like the earring, and I don't like Callista Flockhart, but that's <laughs> off screen. Yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah. Mission Impossible 7. Can't wait to see that. Coming out. See so that's, that's what too. they're saying. People are, you know, holding their money for those movies. Well, up look, against Creed 3, up against John Wick Chapter 4, which I think is a different kind of movie. John Wick is just, just the double tap king. Let me throw this in. Indy doesn't you. appeal to younger audiences, which might be probably closer to the truth. Although my boys were fired up. I'll give you folks my Cinemark review. So I went online. I'm at the point where I ordered, I ordered three tickets and then one for Ryland. They have a ticket for 11 and under. Masaminos, that was uh, $33. Then I ordered, I said, well, while I'm here, I got two combos, which save you like a buck, of a large popcorn and a large drink. Yep. I did that twice, and then I got two more large drinks. So four drinks, two popcorns. That was $39. Yeah. Two popcorns, four Cokes, 39 bucks. Throw in the fees. I don't know why. I mean, I'm doing it online for them. That was seven fifty. The taxes. It was eighty six dollars and change for the four of us to go see Indiana Jones. Forget the fact that they've got a bar with no drinks. So eighty six bucks for the four of you. Yeah. So twenty two bucks. Twenty twenty two bucks a person. Masaminos. Not what? not bad. It's not bad, but it's it's. It's not like in your mind, in my old mind, that I'm going to walk out and buy a $6 ticket and go to the movie. In my mind, it's 25 bucks with some snacks. Yeah. Well, that's because you're so stuck in pricing. It used to be 5 bucks a ticket, right? But even at, even yeah. at 10 bucks a ticket, it cost, over, it cost over 100% more than the tickets to buy the snacks. Yeah. Well, captive audience, they got you, right? That's right. So the number one reason ScreenRant.com says that the movie failed at the box office. Indiana Jones needed a full reboot more than it needed Harrison Ford. So do they need a new Shay LaBeef plays Harrison Ford? Is that what's going to continue? Well, I, I, I don't know. I don't and think he's the guy anymore. And is there Indiana but Jones they, you know, without Harrison Ford? They've had three Spider-Mans. They've had how many umpteen Batmans? I think if a franchise is written, directed, and produced properly, I think you can reboot it with somebody else. In the title role. Hollywood has proven that. I just wonder if... So you're thinking Michael Keaton as her, as Indiana <laughs> no. Jones? Val no. Kilmer as no. Indiana Jones? No. George Christian Clooney? Christian Bale? George Clooney? Who was the best Batman? See, I'm so glad he's back. This is what I Michael need. Michael Keaton, in my opinion. You thought Keaton was good? Yeah, because you didn't... I think he, he kind of fit the role. Nobody really, Adam West wasn't really Batman, right? Nobody really knew it. I love it when he tells that guy, I'm Batman. What? Like, I'm, I'm going to kill you. How about a roll call? Yeah, let's do a roll call. Let's see who's all in this morning. Diane Tippett, good morning. Judge Posey checking in. Roy Gutierrez. Ash Wade is here. Nice. Lisa Poole, Bobby Leister. The it Leister is called Robin. a Wednesday, Bobby. Good call. A great call by Bobby Leister. Today's the best day to get into Veracruz because the entire menu is there and called it. And called a Wednesday. That's Rena right. Sherrill Linda Chris. Chris, that's Sheree Brissett. We know that. Yeah, Sheree's there. Yeah. Chris, oh, yeah, he's Chris still is asleep. asleep. Yeah. Stephen Kidder, good morning. Scott Snow, Stephanie Conti. Scott Snow, welcoming me back. Good to be back. Ricky King. See who else is in. David Glass, Cody Bauman, Michelle Wilson Hawkins, Daniel Wade White. Congrats to you, sir. Got promoted. Interim, uh, what is he? Interim associate provost of curriculum or something like that. He got a nice little title. And, hey, uh, there you go. Probably no raise. It's, you know, no, higher no, ed in this age. They only age. took 10% yeah. off his salary for that. <laughs> HR Mallory, good morning, sir. Greg Garcia, good morning. We need H HR. Come see us soon. Jordan Glass. 
I've Sheree been told. says ridiculous. Mom used to have us bring stuff into the movies when stuff was cheap. Yeah, you used to be able to do that. There's Patricia Nagel check it in. So I did bring you something back from Canada. I want uh, I wanted you to uh, you know. I'll, I'll show the, the, the group here. It's this a is beautiful normal. bottle. Yeah. It looks like it's just mineral water. Yeah, or a, yeah. Well, well, yeah, whatever you want to call it. It's perfectly clear. Flourish vodka. Have you had it? from grain. It's from the Eau Claire distillery. I've had other Are, did, libations from the Eau Claire distillery. Have you had that vodka, or did you simply buy that during one of the days that you were stuck in the airport? <laughs> did you buy that at duty-free? Go, oh. Got to get some for Carter. Duty free, like on that third or fourth morning when you were scrambling. Passing Tom yes. Hanks. Thank you for that. I think it's beautiful. Yeah. It's got the Alberta, the wild rose, which wild is rose. the provincial flower of Alberta. Yeah. And it's it's uh, distilled in uh, Turner Valley, which is just outside of Calgary. Just Owned south by and Ted west. Turner. Ted Turner. But it's where some of, of the first oil fields of Alberta were found. But there you go. Enjoy that. Speaking of Ted Turner and my appropriations of names, uh, Lindsey Buckingham's niece, Dawn Buckingham, will be joining us. The Fleetwood Mac star said his, his niece is the right person <laughs> to lead the Land Commission. Now, we're very excited to have Land Commissioner Dawn Buckingham joining us. A little back history. She's elected in November of 22. She took the place vacated by the inept and ignorant George P. Bush, who ran for governor. Uh, Our attorney general. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to guess that at some point she worked in the office with George P. Bush, and we'll probably go easy on Bush with Ms. Buckingham because I have a feeling that... I don't know what she did. She was a senator, state senator. There you go. Maybe they're friends, maybe not. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. I don't know. Uh, well, I'll ask her. Ask her that. I'll yeah, ask her. Y'all friends or not? Or? I thought the guy was... A, I'll put it this way. 99% of Texans can't tell you who the land commissioner is or what they do. And you won't be part of that group after today. You won't be part of that group after today. You'll be the 1%. And a lot of them didn't like George P. Bush as land commissioner. How about that? He I would think a lot Alamo. of people, well, and I think that's what did him in. Come I think on, a lot man. of people felt indifferent. To George P. Until he wanted to move the alum. And what made him want to do that? I, I have no idea. Honestly. I mean, was it, did he think he was going to, did his dad own some land outside of San Antonio to rejuvenate another area? Was he going to move it to Fort yeah. Worth? Like that's, you know. Was he going to pull a Beto and <laughs> profit off the land development? I don't know. I don't get it. Maybe we'll ask if that's still a plan of the land commission, which I don't think it is, but. Astros update brought, brought to you by the great folks at First State Bank Louise. Patricia Nagel came by while you were gone. She was wonderfully insightful. And the Astros. Stopped by this morning as well. Astros there you go. Good morning. She's awesome. That was an interesting July 4th game. That had all the fireworks. Fantastic. Oh, no, no. I was thinking two days ago. Sorry. The, uh, Sorry. Colorado Rockies game yesterday. Yeah, we won. The that Astros one. won that one. Four it was, to yeah, one, one. It was a pretty pedestrian effort. A couple Although quick Jose updates. Tuve was out. Christian Javier struggled again. Uh, he gave up nine hits, uh, eight runs. They were all earned in four innings the other day. That's not good. He had four strikeouts and no walks. And I told Ash that's because it wasn't like he was all over the place. He was just throwing batting practice. Yeah. And the Rangers are good. Let us report. The Texas Rangers are good. You're going to see the Rangers over the next couple of weeks uh, begin to make some moves. If that, Well, you're right. Ash says they're going to tank. They're going to tank if they don't make some moves. I've got a stat for you. The Rangers lead our division. They've won more games than the Astros. You remember how we talked about the Astros that led the league in runs scored in innings 7, 8, and 9? That's why they were coming from behind. If they'd be down 5-2, to two, they'd win 7-5. to five. It's not a problem. The Astros are closers. They're there to win. They play the whole game. The Rangers are now 0-29, depending on yesterday. No, didn't happen. The Rangers are 0 and 29. Did they lose yesterday? No, they won. They're 0 and 29 people in games where they trail after the eighth inning. So if at the end of the eighth inning is four to three Astros, not one time this year, not one time with over 48 wins, not one time have the Rangers come back and won a game. 
at the end of the game. Yeah. They've got no walk-offs. They've got no timely hitting. They've got no extra inning RBI that let them win just one game. 29 of their losses, they trailed after the eighth inning, not the ninth inning. They trailed after the eighth inning and could not rally. Their bullpen is beyond suspect. It is terrible. And if the Rangers don't go seek big-time relief help, and they, they did sign um, a Rodmus uh, um, Chapman. Chapman. Aroldis Chapman. Aroldis yeah. Chapman, who Dusty Baker wanted as well. They well, did the guy sign only him. Came, I mean, he came in in his first pitch like 100 miles an hour. That's why he Oh, yeah, he him. can bring it. And he was stuck in where? Kansas City? Abs- uh, yes. And, and here's the, the real fact is the, uh, the Rangers are going to have to find that help, rent help, and hope that chemistry follows. Because without it, they're going to be done. Yeah. They have some great players. Jonah Heim, they have the, the uh, catcher's good. The, uh, the, they got some good players. They're good. Astros win three out of four up there, though. Which was huge. Which was huge, people. The, I mean, obviously, the only thing better would have been four out of four. Cuts the lead. I think we're, we trail them by three games now. Yeah. That hurts. It hurt them. And it let them know that the Astros can come to their house and win three out of four. Greg Garcia says, nice to see Abreu starting to heat up. That'll be crucial. Abreu hit yeah. a 450-foot bomb the other day, three-run <laughs> shot. Yeah. That was his, by far, biggest home run as an Astro. What I liked is... Uh, what I'm starting to see is the Astros players are doing something with him that they didn't necessarily do with Yuli Gurriel. They loved Gurriel. Leave him alone? <laughs> no, they're they're looking to him for leadership. Yeah. And and uh, there was an infield play the Well, other I day. think at this time you need it because you've basically in that team you've got Bregman. Altuve's been in and out of the lineup with injuries. Dubon, Pena's got a you stiff know, neck. Everybody else is young. This so who team, do you have? Chaz McCormick now having to play for his job. I don't. I don't get throwing his name out there on uh, as trade bait well, on the trade wire. So you've got. So let's look at the outfielders. You got Corey Jolks, who has overperformed. The kid's hitting almost two seventy, makes really good plays in the left. You've got Jordan Alvarez, who's a left fielder who's still on the shelf. You've got Michael Brantley, who's a left fielder who's still on the shelf. Although I think I think you can take him out of the mix. Then you've got. Tucker is cemented in right. He's your guy. He's going to the All-Star game. <coughs> He's the guy. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. So Tucker's your right fielder. But you've got Jake Myers, who was entrenched as our center fielder until he hurt his shoulder two years ago. McCormick comes in, and he's just hitting bombs and timely hitting, and he's part of the team chemistry, too. He does his little uh, Chaz Michael Michael, his little dance after every uh, – after every home run, it lets you know that you're hitting some bombs when you when you've got a home run dance. So you you know it's <laughs> like true. Deion Sanders had a touchdown dance. He played defense. It's because he gets in the end zone. But with all those outfielders, you're not getting rid of Alvarez. No, Jokes is a University of Houston Sugarland product. You're not getting rid of him. He's your tie to the city of Houston. Yeah, and you've got to look between. Myers and McCormick. Now, I think Jake is great with the glove, but McCormick's shown himself to be satisfactory as, a, as an outfielder, and like we say, if you can get on base, you're going to play. Yeah. I don't know. It's going to be fun Craig to watch. Craig Kessinger hits his first home run, started at short as they moved Dubon over to second because Dubon uh, has been Altuve couldn't go yesterday. The key. Dubon has been the key to our early season success, so successfully playing center field, second, short, I think he played first base one night. He's a utility player. Oh, by the way, he's hitting like right at 300. It's very, very difficult. Left oblique discomfort for Jose Altuve. He'll be Man, assessed today. If I'm tired of people sitting on the bench over discomfort. I've got left hip discomfort right now. I'm here. <laughs> Get out there and do your job, mighty might. You're not playing baseball at well. Our many, guys, you're, you're our guys take a lot of siestas. No yeah. doubt about it. That, that's a long Astros update, but thanks to the great folks at First State Bank of Louise. By the way, if you want to buy some land and you want to put down like 15% and finance it for 30 years, <laughs> good luck.
<laughs> unless you go to First State Bank of Louise. Other banks want 20, 25% down, and they want it paid off in 10 years. Yeah. First State Bank of Louise says, hey, you can speculate on land. We believe land values are solid in the state of Texas. We're part of the state of Texas. Reach out to First State Bank of Louise. Let them help you secure that future home site that you want. I think that's awesome. Folks, Allen's Record Service, 578-6300, the VCS companies. For all your communication needs, Chestnut Furniture. Saw Bobby Leon at Ben Zeller's birthday party, which happened while you were gone. Yep. And just thanked him in person again for supporting our forum. He said, I did not know you guys were still on the air. <laughs> and then, of course, Palace Bingo. We missed you where friends meet friends. But I missed had, it because we had two big winners. I, I might have been one of them. 500. I think they gave her $28 when they took the taxes and everything out. <laughs> no, really. She, she got 500 And didn't bucks. have to split it with a bunch of people. That's she always nice great. to know. She probably gave Lee and Ida a little bit. Maybe. You think? Awesome. So, mass shooting in Philly. South. Philly. Late Monday night. The eve of July 4th. Details slowly emerging over the shooter. And guess what? It's not a white guy? Well, not in South Philly. Chances aren't good. Welcome back. But reportedly, a transgender male... Oh. Who just started shooting? That's Trump. Blocks fault. from where he lived. Trump. He fault. or she? They blocks from where they lived. It. The two people, five people killed. Two of them kids. One two years old. One thirteen years old. Senseless tragedy. But now there seems to be a string of shooters that are transgender. Right. Well, they're frustrated. They're misunderstood, and it's your fault because you're a rich white guy. It's your fault. You're doing that to them because you don't understand what they're going through. Well, and there you start getting into the narrative that is starting to be spun by some media that is almost apologetic for them being mass shooters. But it's not a mental health issue. But if you're, if you're a white guy and you're shooting people, it's a mental health issue. Yeah. Well, if you're transgender and shooting people, it's, it's a no longer a mental issue. health issue. That's a societal Society issue. Society is the problem and the yeah. reason for it. That's kind of the way these things are starting to trend. Yeah. Watch the way it's being spun. James Kerr says, Philly doing what Philly does. Well, the media, I heard a deal the other day yesterday, uh, Glenn Beck's people were on, and that, this is how I was looking forward to doing the show today, and I was driving early, 8.30. And I flipped on the radio, and Glenn Beck was on. And in my mind, I was like, huh, I didn't know Glenn Beck did weekends. It was Tuesday. <laughs> yeah, that's why. But his guy said that mathematically, just to make you understand, no matter your race, including all races in the United States, mathematically, you are more likely to be highly allergic, walk out of your house at random, and get stung by a wasp, hornet, or bee, and die, than be shot by a police officer. But if you listen to the mainstream media, oh man, if a cop pulls you over, you're a goner. Yeah. If you're an unarmed American, unarmed, which to me, by the way, includes those who are licensed to be armed. I mean, you don't read about he was a lifetime NRA member and had a license to carry and when didn't he get... just went nuts at a convenience store. Doesn't happen. It's always the illiterate, incompetent, illegal weapon carrying idiot that gives everybody else a bad name. That would be like throwing ash into the Chevy DuPont number 24 Monte Carlo and letting him go out on a NASCAR track and wondering why he caused a wreck. Yeah. He doesn't have that license. He can't drive 55. Hang on, was it? Turn that up for me right there. John Telchik, good morning, my brother. Hey, man, how are you? I'm doing great. I want to tell on the you Wade and Carter show. You're on the Wade and Carter show live in Victoria, Texas. I'm doing my radio broadcast. But I just wanted to tell you hi the other day. I was driving along, and, and uh, folks were joined by my buddy John Telchik. Many of you should remember, especially if you're close to my age, 
JT was a punter at the University of Texas, went on and had some great years with the Chicago Bears and on with the uh, Philadelphia Eagles, where he really thrived under uh, Buddy Ryan's tutelage. I'm not sure Buddy could kick a football, but uh, JT was a, what, two-time All-Madden team selection. they give you a turkey leg when you won that? No turkey leg. No turkey actually, leg? Actually, I was on it once in... My dog was on the mask. It was the mascot one year. So I got Cleat. two, yeah, two trophies, but only one. Uh, one was mine. There you go. Well, hey, I'll call you after the program. I'd really just call to check in. How are things in the Kerr Patch? Everybody okay Every, over there? Everything, everything's good. Everything's good. Just, just checking in. Enjoy it. Have a good Wait, hey, wait. While, while I've got you on the air, real quick, yep. we're, we're expecting a call from the land commissioner. I want you to confirm. This is a true story. That your dad, Avi was the band director at Kerrville High School, Kerrville Tivy, right? That's right. And so the Telchik family band, which numbered how many? Masaminos. Uh, when everybody would show up, I mean, we're probably 45 to 50 at right. least, maybe 60. A, a huge oompa band of Telchik family members, and they were invited for a number of years to play at Worst Fest. They were part of the entertainment. Really? I think John probably had like a little – semi-gay outfit that he wore with some little with a little hat you know and they played ouch yeah ouch. but ouch. tell the truth jt why is the tell what was one of the amenities of being in the band and then what was ultimately the downfall of the band well i think uh you know just it was kind of a good excuse for our family to get together for one everybody in our family is pretty musically inclined back to my grandfather but i think the demise was that we didn't charge anybody but the Celtics like to drink their beer <laughs> right um, I think at the end of the day I think we uh we kind of you know at the end of the day they they probably economically would do better to pay somebody and not give them free beer than let the Celtic family have the free Telchik beer. family band got banned you guys were the uh, in, influence for that scene in the Blues Brothers where they ended up owing the bar money. Right. After the that's bar tap was settled much. up, right? Beautiful. Pretty much. I think that's where they the Blues Brothers got the stories <laughs> from the Telchi family band. Well, hey, hook them horns, yeah. brother, and I'll give you a call soon. You got it, bro. Thanks for the bye time. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah. That's my buddy John Telchi. He was a great, great yeah, you know, good punter. It's that deal when you find a guy and you're like, he's just a punter till he walks in the room. Like, he dwarfs Bill Posey. Yeah. Huge guy. Built like a linebacker. So yesterday, July 4th, Joey Chestnut. I could beat him. Rain delay and all. How do you Six, have a rain delay on know, lunch? I don't know. How do you have outside. a lunch rain delay? 62 hot dogs and buns consumed to win his 16th Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest. That makes him the all-time champ. He's been the all-time champ. Most. Uh, I think this is more impressive. Mickey Sudo eats 39 and a half to win her ninth women's contest. Wow. But now I don't eat sixty-two hot dogs in a year. In three years, right? Is your thought, Ash, that you train, you stretch your stomach, you're not eating, you're just they they dip it in water and all that just to get it down, and then they go throw up right afterwards? Yeah, I, well, yeah no, I think they have to keep them down for a certain length of time. I think. I think I don't Dude. think you can just. I don't think you can binge and purge. Steve Kidder asked a question: Guns are no longer the problem. Guns have not been the problem since Hunter Biden was charged right. with illegally illegal possession Which and co-opted a plea down. And then yesterday, news... Could mean cocaine's not a problem yeah. anymore either. Well, yeah. Yesterday, there's news breaking that there was cocaine found in a workroom at the White House. But now, who's telling that story? Because everybody there is sworn to the regime you know. So who let that leak out? Well, they're no longer wanting to, uh, I think, stay on with uh, the Biden side. There you go. Hold on. That number isn't work. Try it. Uh, 361 894 4020. What is uh, Callie Frommy saying up there? Oh, wait. 361. Oh. Sorry. Callie said that on the uh, shooting in South Philly, that initial reports were great links to not mention any gender. Folks, it's a mad, 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 mad world. I mean, it, it's a dude in a dress named Kim Brady. Kim Brady something who decided to shoot people randomly in South Philly. Should be the end of the story. Was Kim Brady put down there or was Kim there Brady go. arrested? Uh, searching for, suspects Sorry. identified. So. Good morning, Hi, Wade. Good, good morning, it's the Wade and Carter Show. 
Hey, good morning. This is Don Buckingham. Hi, Don. Sorry for the phone issues, but we've got them worked out. I'm glad you could join us on the show this morning. How are you today? I'm fantastic. It's, um, We're joined by Texas Land Commissioner Don Buckingham. It's our first day back after a long weekend, and I was just telling Ash, I don't know if there's enough days left in this week to get me ready for next weekend. You know what I mean? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's just not enough rest to get back at it on the weekend. <laughs> How are you? Did you have a nice fourth? You, you might be right about that. I'm, I'm uh, recharging my electrolytes, though, because it was definitely a weekend of, uh, I was joking, we were out smiling, waving, and sweating. There you go. <laughs> the entire weekend. A lot of sweating. How, how did you spend your fourth as, as land commissioner? Were there official duties, or were you just chilling with the family? Oh, absolutely. No, we were in parades and out visiting picnics and just trying to be present and educate people about uh, about what the general land office does, because in general, people just don't know. And then last night, I have to tell you, I got to sit and watch fireworks with a bunch of our kids in the foster system that, you know, just bless their hearts. And it was just really great to kind of talk to them. And I was actually the first uh, first person holding office that they had ever met. And so it was just really fun hanging with those kids and just realizing every day that, um, you know, how we take care of our children, how we educate them is probably one of the most important things we do. You know, when I go back to my, my, my first and really only real interaction with the GLO was um, I lived in the Valley for a number of years and I had friends that had the, uh, well, we called them permanent leases, but they had the they had the the coastal, like on the uh, land cut. They had the little bay houses, you know, the little mm-hmm. fishing shacks. And, mm-hmm. um, and and I remember it being a big deal when when the state had the ability, whether it be through Google Earth or through drones, that you know they monitored your footprint on that water, and by mm-hmm. and large. <clears throat> the people that I knew were happy about that. They thought that's good. <clears throat> we need somebody. We don't need we don't need guys out there extending their dock eight more feet. And at times, the state actually came by and told people, "You, when you redid this deck, you added another boat slip over here, and you can't do that." And uh, folks had to make adjustments. And I thought that was actually, and, and most of my friends thought that's a good thing. Next thing you know, we'd have wall to wall condos along the intercoastal, and that's not the program. <laughs> yeah, those fishing cabins are definitely special. And, and like you said, most of the time they're passed down generation to generation. So but it's they're your pretty job special to, deal. Your job to police that, right? I mean, it's. It is. It is. Yes. And for tell, our listeners, yeah, yeah. tell folks what the general land office or, or your position is as commissioner of the general land office does, because I don't think people see it on the ballot. I'm sure most of the folks in this region and this county voted for you this yes. time around in, in November, and, and congratulations on, on the victory. Um, Thank you. But what does the land commissioner and the general land office do for Texans on the day-to-day? Absolutely. Well, let me just quick brief history. You know, when Texas was transitioning from a sovereign nation to a state, we had to figure out who owned what because of the multiple flags we had lived under. So we had overlapping, for example, Spanish and Mexican land grants. And so someone had to figure all that out. So the General Land Office was formed to be the keeper of maps, the guardians of Texas history, and the steward to what is today 13 million acres of, of state land. And that land was set aside to fund public education. So for example, we gave a couple billion dollars to public education this last year. We also fund our state veterans programs through some of that opportunity, which if we're just trying to get that word out. We run veterans nursing homes, veterans cemeteries, and then we have veterans mortgage plans for our veterans who want to buy a house, renovate a house, or buy some property. We do everything coast, beach restoration, oil spill cleanup, derelict vessel cleanup, you name it, we do it. Um, everything big, disaster recovery related to HUD, hurricanes, fires, and floods. The general land office touches every Texan's life every day, and if we're doing our job right, you don't even know we're here, for better or worse. So, but we are so, trying so, to get the word out. So I guess you've been doing your, the job right for a long time because I think <laughs> until recently when the former commissioner decided that it was a great idea to move the Alamo and – stirred up Texans in the wrong direction, in my opinion. Probably people didn't know what the land office or land commissioner did. Are you, 
Are you tied in any way? Um, I mean, I'm sure you know Nim Kid, but is that is that part of y'all to a degree with the emergency management folks? Yes, we work hand in hand with Nim. Nim most of the time does the immediate response, the FEMA kind of part of the response. We're the ones who come in later and rebuild. There are some exceptions to that, but in general, we just work hand in hand with them, um, kind of passing the baton back and forth, pending on what stage of the disaster we're in and, and what exact kind of disaster it is. We have a good friend, longtime friend of the program here named Randy Vivian, who um, works with that department went up there probably three or four years yeah, maybe, ago maybe a couple more, and uh, yeah. and really really he's very very proud of the work that, that you folks do on that tell us about are you involved with the permanent university fund we are oh. i sit on that board and um we are excited about well, hook them horns okay so let's just <laughs> hook them horns yeah. let's just keep that at the forefront of your thoughts <laughs> yep, I got you on that one. I tease because, you know, the Permanent University Fund, University of Texas gets two-thirds and A&M gets one-third. And I love Aggies, don't get me wrong, but we do joke that Aggies picked first. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And they don't they don't need as much money. They have huge booster support. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> Speaking of support, uh, your office did pretty well this legislative session. Let's talk a little bit about that. Um, you mentioned the veteran services, almost $12 million for veteran cemeteries um, or for new veteran cemeteries. So can you tell us, have you identified where those are going, where they're going to be, or is that still too early in the process? We're just kind of waiting for the money to come. No, we are we are pretty signed, sealed, and delivered on that. So it's going to be up in Lubbock. It's going to be the first uh, veteran cemetery that we've been at, built in about 11 years. It's going to service over 25,000 unserviced veterans at this point. And kind of the way that process works, because, you know, every community would love a veteran cemetery. And gosh, we would sure love that. But the federal veterans organization has some rules. So the way it works is the community has to make an appeal. Um, they have to donate the land. They have to get the utilities and the roads to that land. And then we, we get it on the list at the federal level for funding. We have to kind of wait for that funding. We got, we were very blessed this year because Lubbock was going to be about two slots out of the funding, but then a couple of other states couldn't get their um, ducks in a row in time to get to get their projects built. And I said, hey, Texas can do it. We can turn this puppy on a dime. So we lit the afterburners and and got everything pulled together so that we could could grab that funding and then of course the the state chipped in and we're excited about it so tell us about when you go from and by the way i applaud you on so you've been in office maybe a year and a half you're com not even you're completely six months, <laughs> six months. oh november 2022 it, yes. it just seems like a year and a half <laughs> right yeah, you are now 64 years old um but you you, I mean, you're not, you know, we're bouncing all over the place. We haven't had the opportunity to visit offline, and yet you're completely up to speed on the Permanent University Fund, on emergency management, on veteran cemeteries. Um, what, I know you were a state senator. What led you this direction, except the quest for power, and what, I mean, what, <laughs> because we've been fortunate. We, as a program, we're in our seventh year. We're in sleepy, mm -hmm. sleepy little old Victoria, Texas, but we've had Ken Paxton on. We've had everybody that matters in the state of Texas on here except uh, Governor Abbott himself. And, and, uh, and that's okay because I'm, I'm not a huge fan. But anyway, we've got all these people that have come on. Some of them are reading notes. Some of them say they're going to get back to us. You seem totally engaged, totally up to speed did being a senator help with that? Or are you just naturally smart? I mean, what? how did that happen? <laughs> well, I, I am a physician by training, so there I do go. love to study and, and I'm dedicated to being a lifelong learner. But I, I love this job and we love Victoria and Jeannie Morrison and yes, uh, Lois Colcourse do a great job representing y'all. And um, actually, I think uh, Sheriff Lauterbach is going to come on board with the general land office and help us with some stuff along the border. So I we pay a lot of attention gonna, to Victoria. I was wondering if you were going to make that public. Sheriff Lauterbach is a great friend of the program and a great friend, period. Um, he and I often interact offline, and uh, I, I'm very excited about it. Can you, I mean, do you feel comfortable elaborating a little bit about what the sheriff's going to do for you? 
Well, I well we I don't know that we've made him a formal job offer. So he might be learning things from your radio After show this morning through. he didn't know about. <laughs> but um but we no, we've been work we've been talking to him for a little while because of course we have hundreds of thousands of acres on the border. The state lands are where the border wall is being built by the state where the federal government completely abdicates their duty on what they're supposed to be doing and why they think Ukraine needs a border but Texas doesn't is beyond me. But but that's a whole nother conversation we could talk about for probably two weeks. But yes, ma'am. Anyway, so we're bringing him on, just his specialty in law enforcement, um, his expertise in the border, having been head of the Sheriff's Association. We just really feel like we could use some help. We've had, we have some very special property. Um, It's actually 20 miles, I think it's 20 or 30 miles north of the border. It's just north of I-10. So nobody's going there unless they uh, are really looking for it. But it's got a very, it's got... A very special collection of rare earth minerals on it and magically a few months ago we started seeing a whole lot of traffic from from chinese migrants and i just want to remind everybody the chinese don't just up and leave their country these are people that their government want over here for some reason and magically they're just scouting this whole place around so we're paying a lot of attention and we just felt like we needed that extra oomph um also you mentioned the alamo earlier and i I, i'm and that's kind of part of the funding thing we want to talk about you know the state dedicated 400 million dollars to the alamo project that's not to move the alamo right 100 percent. our whole goal is to be sure that a visit to the alamo is as significant as the events that happened there because you know as in general, the average visit to the Alamo is eight minutes. And while we all love the Alamo and we all talk about it, people generally go and they thought, is this it? And they walked around for a couple of minutes and they left. And so we want to put the Alamo in context. We want to talk about the true sacrifice that happened, how it really sparked and ignited that Texas independence that we love so much. And it's known around the world. So we are really excited about getting a visit to the Alamo um, as significant, as I said, as the events that happened there. People Four, leave the $400 mall. $400 million. That's impressive. That's, that's awesome. People leave the mall. They walk over. They look at the Alamo, and then they run across the street to Ripley's Believe It or Not. <laughs> but I think <laughs> yes. the way Where they can get a photo with a waxed all Davy Crockett. All you need Crockett. is a couple of musket ball firing snipers on the roof of that mall and give people a feel for what it was like. So, yeah, here you go. <laughs> Duck, Danny. <laughs> Get inside the get inside the walls. I would love to see, I would love to see someone in period costume, reciting, Travis, letter to Sam Houston. We we do that pretty regularly. Uh, we also have people in period costume who fire their muskets and nice. get everybody's attention, especially when we have some people who don't want to respect the Alamo. Every once in a while, we whip them out just for fun. Um, nice. <laughs> I like it. No, like, I like it. It's like, oh, is that what you're talking about? Well, let's let's just have a little practice firings right now. So, um, but it's great. If you haven't been to the Alamo lately, uh, we have closed the street in front of the Alamo to road traffic. So it's just pedestrian traffic. We have acquired the buildings across the street, which is where the big museum's going to go. We're about to start building a big educational system, our center, so we can educate our kids on our history and that is the uh, traditional history, not any woke baloney. And then um, we've just opened, there's a whole new collection that Phil Collins gave us that we've got opened up so you can come and see the collection centers. The Alamo, the property is going to be um, uh, just getting better and better over time. So now's a great time to come and see some of the beginnings and then come back once a year. And hopefully in two to three years, we've got the project completed. I've got some uh, some really amazing stuff up my sleeve, but I have to keep it secret until this fall. Sure. And so, but we'll get back on and, and we'll try and and, uh, and break that news with y'all because it's going to be a big deal. So Sounds we're good. excited. And really, and uh, as you know, as, as land commissioner, this, is a, this, this region is steeped in Texas history with Goliad, with Gonzalez, and, there, and everything well, around Tory, here. We had Comanche Indians. We had all kinds of things right around here. Very interesting. The Phil Collins collection interests me because I know there's been, with limited concern, some of the stuff had to be re-vetted to make certain that it was authentic, to make sure that Phil himself <clears throat> didn't get duped when he bought 
certain items. But I just find it interesting that a British rock and roll icon legend collected Alamo stuff. I don't know what his motivation was, except that he apparently had the largest private collection anywhere in the world. He did, and it's my understanding that he felt like he was a reincarnated Alamo defender, that the first time he visited the Alamo, he had a very surreal experience and felt like in a former life he was there defending it. And so that led his passion for Alamo artifacts. Remember, and, kids, um, mushrooms have residual effects. Be very <laughs> careful. No matter how natural your drug of choice, the land commissioner and I, Don Buckingham, encourage you to remain drug-free. Hey, <laughs> Phil, thanks a lot. He's like, yo, man, whoa, that's Bowie's knife. Get it? <laughs> David Bowie. <laughs> yeah, I got that from David Bowie. <laughs> <laughs> We're thrilled to be joined by Texas Land Commissioner Don Buckingham. Before today, 90% of you could not have told us who the Land Commissioner is, even though you voted for her. Think about it. We all know that there was an uproar. Um, leave it to George P. to find a way to divide people over the Alamo, but I just, I, I'm thrilled. Actually kind of brought them together. Well, because he did, they all <laughs> united against yeah, I've George never met. I haven't met anybody in Texas who was for that plan to relocate the Alamo. Yeah, I guess it was in the <laughs> way, the river wall, we were going to cut like a new ditch. I don't get it. Great stuff, <laughs> but uh, very, very excited for you. Very excited for you to have Sher uh, Sheriff Louderback join your forces. I, I, I hope his first duty is to go down and arrest uh, Mayorkas. That would be ideal. He would just arrest <laughs> that guy for trespassing. If anybody, if anybody could do it, Sheriff Lauterback could, right? There is yeah. no doubt about it. Chuck Norris no, calls. Mayorkas would have to show up in Texas first, which right? is part of the problem. Eh. Chuck says. Norris you know, I just, calls I just AJ. made Texas bigger the other day. Did y'all get to hear about that? How did you do that? Well, so the General Land Office determines the center of a, of a waterway. It's kind of part of our mapping duty. And everything, center, everything north of the center of the Rio Grande is Texas. We'd, have, we'd had a couple islands formed that were kind of a big staging area for the migrants coming across right at Eagle Pass. And so we uh, we mapped the center of the waterway. We claimed it for Texas, and Texas got a little bigger. So I'm telling Alaska officially, watch out. Here comes Texas. We're going to keep making it bigger. And <laughs> it, what, it, what was Mexico's response to that? Because I'm sure that, that they were, you know, that was their land prior to that. I don't know what their response was. I didn't hear from them. But what we did do is take the Carrizo cane off of it so that it was no longer a staging area and gave our law enforcement access to it. So hopefully we cut down a little bit of the migrant traffic nice. coming across nice. there. Well done. Hit those islands with a little napalm. Yeah. And so here's a question for you. Is it just personal choice or is it a state position to call those folks migrants rather than illegal immigrants? I'm just I'm just personal question. No, you're probably true. I, you know, I think we all move in some way to the politically correct way to say it. Yes, um, and, and so, so that people will actually hear our words instead of having a visceral response. But yes, I agree with you. Sometimes I, we, we, we say both things pending. Well, you know, as long as you keep doing it right, call it whatever you want. You know what I mean? That's I mean, <laughs> because actions do speak louder than words. And, and I haven't heard anything come out of the press of your office that makes me anything but proud of you and uh, thrilled to have you as our land commissioner. I think you're doing a fantastic job. Six well, months I, on the job, Ash. You. Six months on the Six job. Months, and, you and, need a break. You know. Can you go to Camp David? <laughs> Maybe you go to, the, hey, go to the White House. They've got free cocaine. It's no problem. Just go on up. Yeah. The best T-shirt I saw yesterday was um, we're at one of the parades. There was a gentleman who had, you know, it's a picture of Biden on the front of his T-shirt. And, and somewhere on there, it said July 4th, and then out of Biden's mouth, it said, Happy Easter. Right. I, almost fell off, I almost fell off my car. That's I was so wonderful. So that is so <laughs> was, wonderful. So, and I, oh, go and, ahead. Oh, I was just saying, as a medical doctor, if Biden walked into my office, I wouldn't be able to allow him to make his own medical decisions because he's clearly mentally not competent. Do you so agree the with fact that? that this sham is our president is unbelievable. I mean, it's it's almost at times Ash and I have referred to it as elder abuse. It's uh, it's it's akin to me to giving Elvis a shot of adrenaline and forcing him onto the stage in Vegas because you've already sold the tickets. The man should yeah. be in rehab. I mean, he should still be here. He'd be 80-something. Well, Democrats still. and the Democrat Party are, um, who was the supermodel that married the old, the old guest, the guest girl? Brooke Shields? No. 
the blonde one from the uh, late eighties, early nineties. Anna, married, what's her name? Anna Nicole Smith. Yeah, her. That is a Democrat of the Democrat <laughs> Party, and and Joe Biden is the old rich guy that they're all married to, <laughs> right? <laughs> It's kind of the way I look at it. So what else is on the horizon? We, we, you got anything yeah, exciting we, going on? We talked, we, we kind of alluded to it, but you got quite a bit of funding for coastal preservation and, and protection as well. So what what is some of those funds, almost $800 million worth, going to be used for uh, in, in the coming years? Yeah, well, first of all, you know, Texas is wrapping up the largest disaster recovery in the entire country with the Harvey recovery. And then right on the tail end of that, we're beginning the largest infrastructure project that the Army Corps of Engineers has ever done in this country, and that is the Coastal Spine Project. So a lot of that funding is going to help start starting to build a system of levees and dunes and all of those types of things. So when this when the hurricanes do hit, uh, their impact is is minimized. And I tell you what. My, my family, I mean, we were the British consulate to the Republic of Texas. We believe we were one of the first land grants. Ironically, the General Land Office immediately settled against my family, something we're going to fix here pretty quick. No, I'm teasing, of course. <laughs> they but, named a palace um, after you. I, I know. I wish they would pay their rent. It's really right. annoying. So, um, But every morning I wake up, and, and the desk that sits um, as my bedside table, <clears throat> my my forefathers who were in Galveston at the 1900 storm, when that storm surge came in, it washed that desk down the stairs from the second story of the house because wow. that wave came and hit the second story of the house and went through it. And so I wake up every day being keenly aware of how destructive hurricanes can be. Amen. And, and so being able to be a part of protecting our coast and – and, uh, and and minimizing the impact of that storm, those storms, it's exciting. I mean, we're at ex we're we're at an exciting time with General Land Office, and um, we're excited about everything we're gonna do for the coast. Plus, I love to hunt and fish, so well, being sure that those I'm things a, stay in good shape. Think about I'm that, folks. Six, six years, and we're just we're still wrapping up post Harvey uh, coastal no doubt. rebuilding. It's, I, it's, I'm it's in the amazing. insurance business, and our home office is in Rockport, and post Harvey. Twia, yeah. Twia brought a trailer down and put it in our rock in our Rockport parking lot there at GSM, and we settled over eighty five hundred wind claims out of a out of a eighteen wheeler air conditioned trailer, and it was the first AC some folks had seen in four or five days. Yes, um, we Rockport was especially hard hit. I I spent a fair amount of time down there during the campaign, and and you know Aransas County, you get those counties that don't have a whole lot of population and y'all have a great new county judge and by the way but um you know the it, the way the federal government is structured it is almost impossible to get rural communities federal help and so that's kind of one of the advocacy things that we're going to dc we're gonna, we're working on trying to get hud to realize that people in rural communities need help too not just the people in the big urban areas fantastic well there's no votes in those rural counties so they really don't care well, and I would tell you under this administration, the rural areas didn't vote for them. In fact, you know what HUD just, okay, I'm going to tell you two things that HUD, HUD just did and the EPA just did that everybody needs to pay attention to. HUD just disconnected through rulemaking those who are hurt by a major disaster and those who get help, i.e., it's all based on in, or diversity or whatever, however they call it. So, so you could get money from the federal government to build something and you weren't even damaged in the storm. They've completely disconnected the two. Um, that is something we are fighting tooth and nail with our congressional delegation. The other thing is that the EPA, right as Title 42 was going away, right as it was the end of the Texas, you know, legislative session, all eyes are not there. They snuck in these little rules about our natural gas plants, um, if they don't reduce, I think it's 98% of their carbon emissions by 2030, they're basically not going to be permitted by the EPA. So wow. I'm telling you, I'm telling everybody who can hear this, this next presidential election is so incredibly important. We cannot let this track continue. Amen. And we're very fortunate in our area here, of course, we're represented by Congressman Cloud. Um, yeah. a very conservative gentleman. Um, State I, Representative I, Jeannie Morrison, Senator Lois Colcourse. Very, very blessed yeah. to have these folks around. And um, I don't think that, I mean, you, you're not going to talk to a much more red region than you are talking to Victoria County. So 100%. Thrilled to have you on. We're visiting with 
uh, Land Commissioner Dawn Buckingham. She's only six months into office and already has the state under control. She's got Chuck Nor- I mean, <laughs> Sheriff Louderback coming on board. <laughs> the only difference between Chuck and, and Sheriff Louderback is, is uh, Chuck's over 20 years older than Sheriff Louderback. <laughs> yeah. It's about the only difference. And not, and not as sexy, right? Right. No. Not, <laughs> not near as sexy and not near as Texan. That's exactly right. Well done. Sheriff Louderback didn't move to Hollywood for a while. That's exactly right. <laughs> Tell you what, we're getting well, close to the top of the hour, and we certainly appreciate your time. Do you have anything else you'd like to share? Hey, just God bless Texas, and we appreciate y'all for all you do, and I'll look forward to getting to come and hang out with you guys again sometime soon. Yeah, and if you're in the area, make sure, uh, you know, if, if, if it'll work out, you're more than welcome to visit the studio We'd as love well. To have we you. You yeah, in, I'm actually going to be down there pretty quick here. We're flan- handing out a bunch of money for flood mitigation projects, so I'll, I'll double check that and we'll let y'all know. Okay, yeah. great. That'd be awesome. Have right. your people get in touch well with us. We don't, we don't have any, <laughs> we don't we don't have have any people. people. <laughs> All of our people are deployed down at the border, <clears throat> so if you need us, just Call us. <laughs> I will. Man, we sure appreciate great. it. Hope you have a great day. God bless Texas. All right. Amen. Take Thank care. you, ma'am. Thank Bye-bye. you. Texas Land Commissioner Don Buckingham. Good sport. How cool is yeah. she? And I did not know she was a medical doctor. Not like that Jill Biden. Yeah, no. No, not at all. She's actually a She's medical actually doctor. She's actually earned it, yeah. Well, well, I shouldn't say she, that. Yeah, those other doctors haven't earned it either. Or but how about it, but. the... Once again, and I don't, and I'm not. It's got nothing to do with Republican, Democrat, whatever. The accessibility of the folks that represent us yeah. is uh, is always overwhelming. And I'm not. There's no uh, false humility here. It's not like Wade and Carter's a big deal. I mean, I'm being honest. It's like it, she, we, in her own minds. We reached out, and she was polite, kind enough to come on in an area that she got all the votes anyway. So think about that. She's not patronizing us. She wants to tell you what she's doing and um and we have to offer a quick thanks to all the people that allow us to do that for all of texas i mean it's not just it's not a republican democrat thing here i mean everybody enjoys the coast and preserving the coast and 775 million dollars to do so everybody wins absolutely republicans democrats independents 400 million dollars to improve the alamo and tell the story of texas everybody wins it's not it's these are bipartisan issues that texans can be proud of and the fact that she's leading it, great job. That's awesome. Th- special thanks today, folks, to Adsonhofer and Adsonhofer.com since 1926. Adsonhofer is Victoria's dealer. The law offices of Steve Kidder. Steve, thank you for helping us promote conversations like the one we just had with Land Commissioner Don Buckingham. AJ's detailing. AJ Villanueva doing yeoman's work. Making your old car look new. Making your new car stay new. Reach out to AJ's detailing. Armor Air. Armor Air did some work at your home while you were gone. Yep. Ash had a... Small we'll, leak. We'll get into all that. We'll tomorrow, do that tomorrow or, or Friday. We, five, depending seven, on nine, the content lags. Five seven nine oh nine six six. White Trash Services. Five five zero oh, eighteen twenty six. Reach out to them for everything from weekly trash pickup to demolition. And, and they're side on services. the roads even earlier than normal. So five thirty in the morning. Get your trash out early. The night before. USA Concrete Coating. Charlie Garcia and his team. And then Went Services for turnkey generator service. Whole house generators powered by gas, natural gas, propane, diesel. You can pedal it, Gilligan. I don't <laughs> care. Reach out to Went Services, and they will come and install a whole house generator at your home or office. Good job, little buddy. Top of the hour there, Skipper. <laughs> We're going to hit it, folks. We love you guys. Hope you have a great day. Be sure and tune in tomorrow. It's great to have Ash back. Yeah, we look forward to seeing you all manana. God bless America. Bye, folks. Bye, folks.